What's up, everybody? Keith here with Integrated Entrepreneur with the main man, Jonathan. Jonathan, what's up, brother? How's it going, Keith? Another day in paradise, dude. Another day in business ownership. You know, being the, yep. the guy, the one everyone calls, man, to, to get shit fixed. Happy Monday. Yeah. So, man, today, dude, let's talk a little bit about perseverance as it relates to entrepreneurship and the reality around people giving up too quick or even worse, staying in bed with a decision or business too long, right? And kind of understanding at what, what point is the tipping scale, right? Of, all right, man, we've, we've done everything we can do up to this point. Is it time to pull the cord, restructure, reiterate some new things? Or is it something that we just need to put our head down and, and kind of go against me? So kind of in your experience of entrepreneurship, do you like wh what's been your experience with the good you know, deciding to stick it out and, and continue to work through it or pulling the cord? And I know you, you've come across that a time or 20 before. Yeah, it's, it's probably one of the most interesting dynamics in life, right? Like think about it like this. Most people fail because not because they did something wrong, it's because they did something wrong and couldn't figure out how to get past that one initial challenge. Okay. Yeah. So fundamentally what we're trying to determine is how long you should stay with something versus when is it time to let it go? And that answer is always going to depend on the situation. It's going to be a little different for everybody, but I think if we look at major signs of what you should track, we'll be able to figure it out. So, one, you have to be self-aware. Like, is do you always figure stuff out or do you always have to ask for help, right? And if you're stuck early on in the process, how much have you tried to research where you're stuck? Because I can tell you, everybody has different skill sets. If you look at my skill sets, it's relationships, it's sales, it's, um, it's team building. However, if you ask me to do something that's very, very technical, something that someone that has a lot of computer savvy may struggle with, or even if they wouldn't, they'd be able to get it. I would get, I'm more likely to get stuck when it's a technical issue. So did I exhaust everything in the world of technical issues? Did I call in all my friends that are technical? Did I search YouTube? Did I search Google? I still can't figure it out. Like getting stuck on a problem is not the end of the world. However, if you find that you're not making progress with your overall goal, let's say your goal is to have a, an eight-figure business and you're in the low, low seven figures and for three years, four years, you haven't made a, a dent and you're still at that same pace, that should be a telltale sign not to give up, but you have to do something different. Maybe you, are, you have an, enough of that market that's local. Maybe you have to go and branch out and go nationwide. It's really boils down to how are you viewing the problem and are you thinking or you're just stuck here and you're not making progress anywhere or are you making slow and steady progress? It just feels like you're not because most people stop because it doesn't feel like they're making progress and they don't realize they're making little incremental improvements every day. Right. Yeah. What yeah. are some of the things that, What are some of the things you need to think about, Keith, or you think about in this situation? Yeah, so I think going to like reverse engineering this whole process and that thought pattern all the way back to like the beginning of, of your journey of an entrepreneur or your business. And I think that's where a lot of people make the biggest, the, the, the I guess the most impactful decision to give up too soon, right? Mm -hmm. Is like, oh man, I got this great idea. We've got this great thing. Let's, let's prove the concept, take it to market, create the business. And then they get hit with 13 things that they didn't think an entrepreneur has to go through. And they yeah. can't seem to get over the first thing, which is typically cash flow, right? Or client acquisition, the number one and two things that you have to have. So like mm -hmm. getting started in the business, if we don't have customers then we can't sell the product or service, and then we beat our head against the wall trying to figure out how to find the customers to sell. And then mm -hmm. we get commission mouth. And then that, you know, things, one thing leads to another and six months goes by and you're like, shit, dude, I've made some sales, but dude, this is tough. Yeah. And then they give up because what's easier? Well, let me just go back to my nine to five where I was pulling in that W2. I didn't have to worry about income. I just mm -hmm. couldn't 
the shit I wanted to do. So the very distinct difference of like, are you going to make it versus are you going to fail? Is this like, are you willing to get punched in the nuts? Take it. Are you willing to just take it and deal with it? And how long can you deal with it before you cry and give up? Yep. A lot of times what you and I see is like people give up right before the shit's about to explode. Mm -hmm. And half these folks never really understand that because they're like, oh man, sigh of relief. I got my job back, found a new job, whatever it is. I got a W2 income. I'm fine. Then they go back to the pattern of side hustle. Side hustles are, are awesome in concept, but when do you have time to do a side hustle? Like, yeah. Now your family's suffering and all that other shit enters into the equation. So for us, I'm always seeing people just giving up too soon yeah, and not putting in a little bit of extra sweat equity and pain tolerance to see the thing through. Yep. And so, you know, that's, that's typical. That's the, the first thing is like, just people give up on themselves too, too soon. Yeah. I think, I think the majority of people fall into that. And that's why I want to be really, really careful with telling people when they should pull the plug. However, after hearing you speak, I have a great story and I'll tell you one time I did pull the plug and why I pulled the plug. Okay. I invested in a gym franchise and I actually cost my partners probably another fifty to seventy thousand dollars because I wanted to stick with it. This is a true story. Happened a little more than a year ago. We invested in a franchise. We bought twelve units, thinking that this was going to be a great—I wouldn't even say side uh, hustle. It was an investment. Okay, none of us, meaning me, my and my two partners, we all ran successful companies. And no one was going to be the operator. We were going to hire the operator. Okay. So first things first, we hired, we went through three operators and no success. We started looking into how the leads were coming. We started looking into the systems and, and guys, this was a gym facility. There were no real systems. There was no real way to get people in, in a predictable manner. And what we found out was, when we asked everybody else in the franchise if they were having success, nobody in the franchise was having success. No one was able to generate leads. No one was even breaking even on the concept. And we were two years in, okay? We already had closed one location and I wanted to stick it out because this new location was doing better, but it wasn't, it was still, we were still 200 members away from breaking even guys a year in. And basically what I did was I checked everybody else in the franchise and everybody was having the same issues. Okay. Everyone had other businesses. They did this and nothing was working. Okay. When I realized that there were two decisions I made one, I didn't want to keep throwing good money after bad because even if everything turned around, we found a solution. There was too much time to make up the difference where we'd break even. And we just did not have the runway of cash to make it. And then two, the, the bigger part of it was, how much money were we going to waste thinking and hoping it was going to work out? It, we, were, we had a $20,000 a month burn rate, okay? So even if it took six months, that would have cost an extra 120000 When we compared that to what the upside was, let's say the upside was bringing in 200000 a year, but that was split three ways. Did you really want to risk, in best case scenario, 120000 to make seventy? If it, if it worked out, that was a situation where, you know what, we tried, we did everything we could, the systems, the processes were not in place. So what we did was we proactively unwound the company. We spoke to the landlord, we spoke to all the vendors, and we basically unwound the company, took a loss. We each lost, and this is a true story, each partner lost 600000 in, in this investment, but we pulled the plug. Why did we pull the plug? because it wasn't one or two or three things that were problematic, okay? The systems were off, the marketing was off, the franchise was off, okay? When we looked around and wanted to see what everybody else was doing, not just other franchisees, but in that market, everyone was having a tough time. So that's when we decided to pull, you know, pull it and, and kill it. And if that helps you, like think about how many things went wrong how I analyze that decision and knowing that what we weren't one or two or three moves away from profitability, 
I, I killed it. That's the type of situation where, hey, you probably shouldn't move forward. Okay, but most of the time, you guys are on the other end of the spectrum. You haven't tried enough things. You haven't tried enough people. You haven't tried enough um, outside vendors. Okay, you guys don't realize your business is usually one or two decisions away from bringing in way more sales and being way more profitable than you think. It, and it's really just as simple as one decision, one phone call. Keith, yeah. what, what else do you think on this? Well, it's, they're, they're, away, they're one decision, one, one degree of separation away from success. You're also one degree uh, away from failure. So you have to yeah. monitor that and, and streamline that fine line. I think what we're talking about, like brass tacks, is emotional versus logic decision making in which way you should go. Mm -hmm. Emotions tend to carry the lead, right, on, on every human's decision making. And absolutely, man, if, if, um, if I didn't beat the emotion versus logic categories early on, I'd burn my fucking business down every day. You know what I mean? Like every day. In fact, yep. I could, I think I just text a friend, Jeff Smith a minute ago. Like, yeah, I think I'm ready to burn this thing down and go work at McDonald's. And he just started laughing. He's like, yeah, me too. And so like you get into this routine of, of emotional warfare on yourself. But you really have to compartmentalize that because emotions will create animosity and psychological warfare to where you close your shit down. And if you just stuck it out a little longer and did some reverse engineering on the issue, you probably have two or three solutions already at your table you didn't know about. Yep. So the, the same goes with what you said. Essentially identify the issue, which you did through reverse engineering. You went and studied market mm -hmm. research, analytics, you look through the scope of the actual franchise and you took it a step further, more proactive. And you went out and you asked other people who were in the same boat as you, what's yeah. your experience, what's been going on, what's your report card look like? All right. Let, let me, let, let's say this, if it's happening to you and five other people, it's probably a dud, it's probably a dud. And I don't yeah. care how great you are at business. Could you overturn it to your, to your degree that you said earlier? Yes. But what's the runway versus return look like? And how much more money do I have to sink in to hopefully get to this return level that we can find? Yeah. So it, to me, it's, man, it, whiteboard this shit out. If you're having issues, pull out your whiteboard. It's the only way yeah. to really figure out exactly what your issues are and where your leaks are. Once you figure that out, then you can make a logical decision on is this fixable or is it too late? Is it debt? Am I in too much debt and I can't afford the debt service? Do I need to go get more loans to add to my debt service? Like if you're just compiling debt to fix other debt, then, then pull the plug, figure out how to unwind mm -hmm. that. If this is a person issue, if personnel, if it's hiring, <laughs> if it's marketing, those things are fixable. Yeah. Very simple, right? Without adding more debt to your debt service. So I think a lot of people make poor decisions up front. They get involved in huge groups of other entrepreneurs who are successful. They get sold bullshit by other people who don't deliver, mm -hmm. right? Marketing being one of those things at the top, funnels and click funnels and double-edged funnels and double-sided funnels and dry docking funnels and all these other damn funnels that are out there that, you know, paying five and six grand a month because you got bamboozled. Yep. That's an issue. Yeah. Right. How many times have you seen those marketing dollars get spent on trash can? A lot. Yeah. More often than not, that's what's going on. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, you got to figure out what you're spending your money on. Is it giving you ROI? And if it's not pull the plug early, early, early on those things, early, the earlier you do it, the more likely it is that you have success in your, in your future. Yep. So I think with that, people just spend money on the wrong things because they get excited. They don't do the due diligence, right? The due diligence, you, if you would have done that due diligence before the partnership in the gym, you guys probably would have walked from that out of the gate. And never Abs Absolutely. Looking back, it is very easy to see those signs. Yeah. So, you know, take it from guys who have gotten punched in the face. You, you want to do all of this before you say I do to any partnership. <laughs> you want to do your due diligence before you say I do to yourself mm -hmm. and really understand what business you're getting into. Go find people who have been in the business. You know, this is the shortcut, the cheat code, if you will. Go find people that have been successful and pay them for an hour of their time. 
Call yeah. up. Hey man, I'll give you a thousand bucks. I'm come, I want to meet with you. I have a, a million questions to ask. I'm mm -hmm. doing some research. Now pick someone that's not in your local backyard, right? So you guys aren't fighting with one another, but find yeah. someone who's willing to talk to you in a different state. Facebook is great. Hey, who owns this kind of business outside of the state of X? You'll find some people. Offer to pay them for their time. Eight times out of 10, they won't take your money. They'll just be willing to help you because entrepreneurs like to help other entrepreneurs. It's the mm -hmm. weirdest thing in the world, but it happens. And do your due diligence on the front end so you don't get the black eye and the bloody nose but, um, you know, as a result. Yeah, you shouldn't be paying somebody for their time if their time isn't worth it. Right. God, you can say that again times 10. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this, this thing, man, it's, it's, this decision's all too common, you know, and a lot mm -hmm. of people, like I said, find, take it the easy route. And guys, the moral of the story is entrepreneurship's a, it's a bitch. It's yep. a bitch to figure out. It stays a bitch. It's not very nice, but one day, damn it, you'll wake up and you have all the right pieces fall together. You'll have the right personnel helping you do the right things and you'll actually get a little time to yourself which is amazing when it actually comes to reality. Yeah. So with that being said, you know, guys, this, this decision is one of the big ones. Do I stay or do I go? If you have any questions with that, if you have any feedback on that, or just want some more pointers, reach out to us, get in our comments, like, yeah. share, follow, do all those things and let us know. We're, we're here to answer real time questions as well. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. Find us some show notes. Yeah. What you need help with, guys. We're here to help. This isn't just us trying to chat for 10 minutes at a time on a random topic. We want this to be beneficial. So if you're in the trenches and you're getting your ass kicked and you're trying to make that decision, reach out to us. Let us give you some guidance and see what we can help you guys with. 100%, guys. Come to us with questions. We love it. And please share this with someone who needs to hear this. We will catch you on the next episode of the Integrated Entrepreneur.